So this is a nice publication from long ago. Mike Danzinger took four different diets, um, different uh, calorie counting, eating all sorts of animals until you were ketotic uh, or a whole food plant-based diet. And you could see weight loss with each one of them, but you, you, you could see a signal that a plant-based diet did the best for the longest period of time. A more modern analysis uh, published just a few months ago took a look at the gene saying, we're going to isolate this gene and we're going to messenger RNA it or small interfering RNA and we're going to stop obesity based on uh, genetics. And so uh, having GWAS, that is uh, a genome-wide uh, association studies, and they were going to be able to figure this out. And guess what? It wasn't about the genes. The obesity was related to eating animal products, particularly meat, um, that had uh, a positive association with obesity outcomes and the more whole grains people ate, inverse association. So the genetics are very clear. We're human. Humans, like very most land mammals that don't have fangs and claws, are supposed to be eating vegetables, grains, beans, grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables, and mushrooms. And if we do that, we don't have this obesity problem. So uh, when we talk about hypertension, have to mention the African-American population because it's standing out on the graph. Uh, yes, older people, uh, men a little bit more than women, but ultimately uh, it's our African-American population. And that is the population with the least control over the blood pressure. There are a lot of things that contribute to hypertension, but ultimately you could talk about social support and socioeconomic and racism and stress and all, all that, but ultimately it's going to, to uh, it's going to boil down to what you're putting in your body. And so in terms of vegetarian diets, we have this Neil uh, Barnard study from years ago showing that when you do uh, a plant-based intervention, you will see a drop in blood pressure. This was very consistent with the DASH diet, which became very famous at Hopkins. Um, and But people don't always remember that the drop with diet in the, in the uh, DASH diet was much more dramatic if a person was eating very little, if any, animal products. So vegan, vegetarian type of dash, uh, low sodium, sure, but get rid of the animal products and you saw a dramatic improvement in the number, uh, in the blood pressure. How about uh, cholesterol? Going to mention health equity here. There's a special thing that I hope, uh, and I, I'm not going to bring the chat back up uh, but so you can answer for yourself. But um, the the we always felt like, yeah, the African American population has more coronary heart disease, but doesn't have higher levels of cholesterol. Um, well, that's your total cholesterol. There are components of your cholesterol that everyone should know about. Uh, so please, if you're not familiar with this, take a note, um, write it down, and then talk to your doctor about it. And that is LP little a. So lipoprotein. Uh, a is a um, a molecule that actually increases the amount of plaque in your arteries. And so there are people with very normal cholesterols who have heart attacks because they have an L elevated LP little a. And I would love to find out how many of you in the audience have had your LP little a checked. But it turns out that the African-American population has a propensity to have higher LP little a levels. And so this analysis uh, with Christy Ballantyne's group made it very clear that blacks have higher levels, that um, the LP little a is not just a, you know, a benign marker. It actually is associated uh, with bad uh, cardiovascular outcomes in all ethnicities, and that we really do need to try and address it. The good news is um, that, yes, it's genetic, and traditional lipid-lowering agents like statins and fibrates don't do much. We do have some success, despite, and this is why I put this one in quotes saying, oh, diet and exercise have no effect. That's not true. Um, uh, and they, we've actually, I'll show you a couple of studies later on uh, where it does improve with diet. It's just that the amount of improvement isn't what you would expect from like a drug trial. That's true, but it's not no effect. It's just small. Um, the interesting part is that there are new drugs uh, and these these four trials are going on right now. Uh, they are uh, recruiting people at, with 
you know, diversity. That means making sure that it's 50% women, making sure that um, African Americans are in uh, in there because that's a at risk population. Uh, fancy names, small interfering RNA uh, that should stop the production of LP little a. So we'll see. Uh, stay tuned on that one. But if you haven't had your LP little a checked, it's a good idea to do so. Switching over to talk about cholesterol. <clears throat> this is another, uh, you'll recognize it by now. This is a Neil Barnard analysis um, showing that when you do a plant-based diet, even plant-based diets with different varieties, uh, as opposed to an omnivore diet, you'll see the cholesterol drop. And the, the, a very modern uh, publication from a few months ago uh, took another look at all of the published literature, meta-analysis of randomized trials, and showed without a doubt that you are going to drop your cholesterol substantially if you go to a plant-based diet. And this is something that um, you, you don't hear enough uh, people say, oh, diet matters, but you know, your genes matter more. Well, they both matter, but it's really important to make sure that you're doing a healthy diet. For And so uh, how about diabetes? Do we have uh, healthcare disparities there? We really do. Um, and it's our Hispanic population, but it's also non-Hispanic Black people. Uh, if you look at the uh, percentage of people diagnosed with di diabetes, it's about 80% more uh, in the black population. And the interesting part is that it results in more uh, association with death from diabetes. Um, and this interesting line in the same publication, 60% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes by a physician. Wait, wait, didn't it just say 80% more prevalence? Yeah, the 60% more is having reduced access to care, which we also have to deal with. But the fact of the matter is, wouldn't it be better to prevent the disease? Um, because it has uh, it wrecks havoc with our uh, minoritized populations, uh, both Black uh, and Hispanic. Uh, we're hoping that um, uh, to focus a little bit uh, later on on end stage renal disease, which is a, uh, a a major problem that we are all paying for. The African American population is uh, because of the diabetes and the hypertension together. 12% of the population and 35% of the dialysis patients. And it's very expensive. Um, you could blame structural racism, poor education, um, having more uh, blue collar jobs. Well, we're not paying for it. Our, our African-American population is not paying all that uh, money, uh, paying in terms of life and paying in terms of, of, of uh, what you can do with your life because you're stuck on dialysis. But financially, uh, that hundred thousand dollars that Medicare pays per patient is really coming from the tax base from other people. Um, so uh, it would be great if we could get educated enough to have the kind of jobs to pay for our own dialysis. But maybe if we did that, we wouldn't even have to have the dialysis. So uh, the answer here is actually very, very simple: reverse it. This was published a few months ago um, that thirty-seven percent of pay people who have type two diabetes it would be gone if they did a whole food plant-based diet for six months. And there's there's more data like this. It's all saying the same thing. It doesn't matter. You know, these um, hazard ratios on this side mean that your risk went down uh, substantially. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you were white, black, if you were a drinker or non-drinker, most important thing you could do is go on a plant-based diet and you would see this benefit. Now, I did, not everyone on this call will have heard of inflammation. Um, it really is tempting to put the chat back on and see how many people have had their CRP measured, high sensitivity C-reactor protein. Um, but be that as may, this is please put it on your list if you haven't had yours measured, uh, because it is a major risk factor. And the interesting part is that uh, this is another source of our racial disparities. That is, blacks tend to have higher levels of C-reactive protein than whites. Now, why is that? Well, it turns out completely different reasons. Our African-American women um, tend to have physiologic issues like lupus. African-American women have nine times more lupus than Caucasian women. And so diseases like that, sarcoidosis would be another one that's more prevalent than in African-Americans, particularly women. 
In men, you know, if you do analysis of large subgroups, you'll see that the elevation in C-reactive protein is really about stress. It's about behavioral factors and socioeconomic factors. Either way, they lead to uh, an increase in heart disease. And so, um, and stroke, this is the, um, uh, the University of Alabama, Birmingham uh, regard study, analysis of C-reactive protein. The more, when you have these markedly elevated C-reactive protein, that's when you see strokes in the African-American population. Now, just ignoring the racial differences for a moment, uh, the reason I was saying that everybody should at least get it checked once uh, is this. This is Paul Ritker uh, just a year ago talking about uh, some very large trials where people had been successfully treated with statins and they felt like they were protected. And sure enough, if they had inflammation, that is a high sensitivity C-reactive protein of greater than two, they weren't protected. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't protected at all. They ended up with almost twice the amount of cardiovascular death that they would have had if they had um, gotten their LDL cholesterol down and had a C-reactive protein that was low. So that residual inflammatory risk and those clinical trials that were done to protect people with statins, really, you really have to recognize it. And what do you want to do about it? Well, uh, I was not too shocked to find out that Paul's uh, great friend of mine, um, he uh, sent that data um, to the regulators. FDA approved colchicine. It was pr approved already for um, for gout, but uh, repurposed for to reduce inflammation because it lowers uh, C-reactive protein. But again, is that doing the right thing? Is that mopping up the floor or is it turning off? So it turns out that we had the answer. It was 21 years ago, University of Toronto, David Jenkins, uh, publishing reduction in LDL cholesterol and reduction in C-reactive protein, Journal American Medical Association, uh, with a whole food plant-based diet. Now, obviously, I, um, whenever I show you an old study, I show you a new one. And so this was uh, only a few years ago, Benita Shaw looking at um, the plant-based diet, uh, whole food plant-based diet, versus the old American Heart Association recommended diet, which was very little red meat, eating uh, poultry, eating fish in large quantities. Well, they were still, uh, those are still uh, an, an overload of decaying flesh, to put it bluntly, and therefore they cause inflammation. And so the graph was very clear. The American Heart Association diet going from an uh, American food to AHA did not change your C-reactive protein very much, uh, and going to a whole food plant-based diet actually did. Mm -hmm.